hurts me deeply. I like to think I'm still hip to what's current, you know? We can burn down the magic user. And expel this foulness. What does he have over you? The wedding ceremony? I'm done playing games. I, for one, have chosen a side. Get your boy on a leash. <sighs> Excuse me. Consciousness returns to you all as the dim blue light of the contestant's circle reveals the 24 contestants that now remain in round three. You feel a spike in your adrenaline as you know that there's a very good chance that your name is going to be called for there's only three episodes left here in round three. Looking around, you can see that 96 of the spaces that were once filled by other mortals like yourselves are now empty, lost to the ravages of the crucible of fate, whether at the hands of some horrific monster or your fellow contestants. Your eyes are brought down to the floor as you see rising up through shadow is the familiar form of Theramgul. And as he comes up out of the ground, you can see he has a big smile on his face, shoulders back, looking around, arms up to the eyes of truth. Greetings, everyone. Eyes of truth, my remaining contestants. I have a bit of uh, an admission to make. And as he raises all the way out, now standing on his feet, he begins to slowly pace around the inside of this circle of light, constantly looking up at you all and beyond into the eyes of truth. I must admit, I was a little bit giddy with anticipation of what was going to happen here today and who the contestants were going to be. So. I'm sorry, Dregs, but I had to sneak a peek at the list. Oh boy. What a show we have for you all today. We've seen some major victories, some epic clashes of power. But I don't think we've ever had such historic grudges coming together like today. I'm just as excited to watch it as all of you. So uh, as much as I like this spotlight and being the center of attention, I'm going to be fairly quiet during this episode because I want to watch just as much as all of you. So, Dregs, you may leave. I've got these names memorized. You just go skulk, huh? Do what you do best. I hope you're all ready for this. Let's begin, shall we? Up first, one of my ancient countrymen. We have Dante Wolfhowl. And uh, Dennis, if you could please introduce yourself and your character. Uh, yes, hello. So Dennis um, from New York. I've uh, been playing d d for eight, nine years, something like that now. Um, and I'm looking forward to see the outcome of today's episode. Um, and as for Dante, uh, as he steps down onto the ground, he's going to look around a little panicked at first until he sees the familiar face of Sir Barrison. Oh, thank Praxis, a familiar face. And then he's going to look at Theramgul and say, you know, I've had a week 
to come to terms that I had not escaped that damned cult before I came to this crucible. I'm not afraid that Marek is here with me. I'm afraid of losing my agency. Should Marek take over, I fear I will be lost forever. And then a moment of silence before, well, that sounds like a you problem, Dante. What, Terengu, should I prevail in this crucible of yours? Will you be able to separate us? I fear if we win, you'll get two generals for the price of one, and it'll be in your benefit. That sounds like quite a bargain. I'm intrigued. There's much to discuss about your particular predicament. I will have to see which of your consciousness is the most useful to me. Welcome to you, Dante. And welcome to you, Dennis. And uh, just so that the people at home know, so you and Deirdre are friends outside the show. And uh, I mean, I'm not saying that you're on opposite sides right now. I mean, who am I to say such things? But you're both soul bound with other people. So uh, today is going to be quite interesting, I think. Yep. Look forward to seeing what happens. Welcome back, Dennis. Okay, who else do we have here? Ah, Death Trap. Death Trap. An individual that has suffered greatly here, but has persevered through some hmm, annoying divine intervention. But nonetheless, you are back in the hot seat, as they say. <laughs> Sorry. So, Pat, if you could introduce yourself, please, and your character, Death Trap. Hi, I am Pat. I also live in New York, not the city, uh, Rochester area. I've um, been playing D&D since AD&D, &D, and actually even before that, so a long time. Um, great to be back. Go to the shop, some merch. Um, so as Death Trap comes down, he appears disheveled, um, somewhat dazed at first. As he notices Dante, he gives a long bow of his head to him, and he smiles. Glad you were here. And Sir Barristan is here. And he looks up at the descending stasis, po uh, stasis pods, makes a gesture of knightly respect, indicating that Death Trap 2 might belong to an order. With the three of us, we have an excellent chance of killing whatever creature we face today. Let's hope we have at least one or two more like-minded contestants to help. I will call upon Praxis to get spirits to aid us. Well said, Death Trap. You know, whatever it takes to get your motivation and confidence up. Huh? I know that placing your faith in... Or relying on your faith has paid off for you. Let's see if that trend continues. Ellison Halfert, you are the next contestant on the Crucible of Fate. Please, please, come on down. And uh, we welcome Dorian back. Uh, there, there's so many things I want to say to, to thank people on this episode. First of all, thanks for all of you for, for being here. Thanks for representing the merch, Pat. And uh, Dorian, thanks so much for being part of our admin staff and the rules committee. I know that you have you stepped away for the past week because your episode was coming up. So thanks very much for keeping things legit. Welcome back to you. If you could please introduce yourself and your character. Um, hi there. My name's Dorian. Uh, I play the many faces of Ellison. <laughs> Uh, I'm currently based out of San Diego, California, and our last two round two, uh, our match in round two, I've had the opportunity to play a lot more D and D. Um, right now, I run Descent into Avernus and Chains of Asmodeus on the Discord server. Please check out our Discord server. We love new people, and we're running games and doing stuff all the time. Um, and then over the summer, I had some really amazing opportunities to actually run some games professionally at the San Diego Comic Con Museum, at San Diego Comic Con proper, and I'll be traveling um, throughout the country over the next couple of months doing a couple more uh, trips. I know I'm doing Comic Con on like Comic Con the Cruise in February, which I'm super excited about. 
Um, but today I'm super excited to be here and play some D&D and uh, punch my friends with make-believe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as Ellison comes out of stasis, um, you hear as his hooves land on the ground and he releases Shay and Tridex's hands. He looks up and away and then over to Therum Ghoul. And you'll notice he hasn't aged since last time. He's still 14, 15 years old. He's not wearing armor. Um, but around his neck, he is wearing a pan flute and then tucked behind his ears, a quill. Um, you can see that his face is tear stained. Um, the Therum Ghoul. Have you ever seen the nature realm? No. Don't answer. Let me tell you about it. I remember my home. I remember long days playing with my friends. We remember climbing the heritage tree, being anything Ellison wanted us to be. Until the day it caught fame. We remember watching as an army came to take the boys home from us. We are not here to be your general, Therumgul. And I will not stand by and let you kill any more of the boy's friends. Do you understand? Well, uh, you speak quite plainly. Uh, I do understand, but... What are you planning to do about it? You'll find out. Hmm. Well, unless you're going to make something happen today... I'm afraid that three more people are going to die. Let's just hope that they aren't your friends. We'll see. At any rate, you have been quite uh, impressive and versatile, Ellison. Perhaps you will um, <clears throat> be inspired Perhaps with me as your muse and change your tune. Anything's possible, including making sure you don't get what you you want. Very well. Time will tell. Though I'm starting to now be going to the other side of this knife's edge where I'm no longer in your corner and starting to wish for your demise. I hate it when I get to this point with my contestants. I like to think of us all as friends and you're beginning to stir up these uncomfortable feelings within me that I try to push away. You know, like hatred. I'm not saying that you won't have a general. I'm just saying you're not going to hurt my friends. You're not going to hurt my home. I understand. I understand. Oh, well, next. This is not a surprise to you, I imagine, considering the ties that bind your souls together. The next contestant is Shay Falconsong. And we welcome back uh, Deirdre. Deirdre, welcome back to the show. If you could please introduce yourself and your character. Hey, everybody. I am Deirdre. I am from New York. I play Shay Falconsong, affectionately known to some as Mama Shay. Um, since my last episode, I actually became a mom, which is uh, the best feeling. So shout out to my husband for, for taking the baby today. Um, so Shay she drops down from stasis slowly and she sees the back and forth between Ellison and Theramgul and she's a little bit concerned um Ellison has a voice of his own and it's nothing that Tridex or Shay could do to, to change that not that Shay would ever want to uh Shay is still in her uh usual garb her chain uh shirt uh leather trench coat sleeveless her uh, shield upon her back doll at her side missing a finger on her left hand and she will go and stand next to Ellison as if guarding him 
from Theram Gore. Thank you. Mm, how sweet. Little family back together again. How I had hoped to watch the family grow together through its experiences. Now I just hope there isn't some trauma introduced with violence. But before we get to our inevitable violence, it's time to introduce Sir Barristan Bell. And uh, John, we welcome you back. If you could please introduce yourself and Sir Barristan Bell, please. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, John from the Pocono Mountains, not far from New York. It's like everyone's from New York, perhaps, and so far. But um, but yeah, I've been playing D&D for right around 10 years. Um, I love this, and uh, it's going to be sad when this is over. Hopefully, it's not over today. Um, so as uh, Sir Barristan is um, dropped down from stasis, his heavy um, his heavy armored boots hit the ground, a uh, little dust coming off the boots. Um, he looks weary. He looks tired. Um, he looks up, makes eye contact with Dante, and uh, he gives a little bit of a of an exhale. And uh, he says to the group, and he looks around. He sees everyone, and with respect and honor, he he nods at everyone. Uh, he looks at Theram Ghoul. He goes, I am an honorable man. I am respectful. I try and do what's best. Um, my king, Aldrich Lyons, saw that in me. Um, then I was banished for lies and, and just <laughs> terrible, terrible um, misinformation. But with that being said, I am an honorable man, but that has gotten me not where I want to be. Um, I will keep honor, but I'm going to show anyone who opposes me why they call me Bright Bones. Damn right you are. I think I'm on Team Bearston Bell now. Indeed, you should show them what you can do, Sir Bearston. I think you're quickly becoming one of my favorites. Perhaps I will place a, a wager on you this evening. Maybe even share the profits, should you emerge victorious. I'm just kidding, I will keep it all to myself. Nevertheless, <clears throat> welcome back to you, Sir Bearston. I hope to see you back here again after your epic battle to come. And it is time now to introduce our final contestant for episode three of round three of Crucible of Fate. We have Tridex. And uh, we welcome Mike back on the show. Mike, if you could please introduce yourself and Tridex, please. Yeah, for sure. Hey, everybody. Um, so my name is Mike live in the capital of Canada, Ottawa, and I've been playing D&D for 30 years, DMing for about 10 of that. Um, and so, as Tridex descends from stasis, he's once again covered in weapons. He looks at his fellow contestants. He looks at Theram Gould. And then his eyes drift to the poker resting in the fireplace. He walks towards it and starts to speak. This little competition in the Fate's Hand Tavern has become more than a game. It has become a battle between good and evil. And Tridex takes the poker out of the fireplace and looks at the tea that glows brightly on the end. And I, for one, have chosen a side and he presses the poker into his forehead and you guys hear his skin sizzle as the smoke billows from his wounds the acrid smell of burning flesh tickling the back of your nose he puts the poker back into the fireplace before looking back at the contestants and i encourage you all to do the same he then takes one knee down in front of theramgul i tridex Lord of Dread, 
declare my fealty to you, my lord. Oh, how wonderful and touching. I sense a bit of a family dispute going on. Insight check. As a DM and a player in this game, Theram Ghoul is trying to determine whether you are being deceitful or not. So if you could message Todd, our referee here today. I'm so sorry I didn't introduce Todd. Todd, if you want to say hello, Todd's keeping uh, eyes and ears on the game for everyone, keeping us straight here. Uh, if you could let him know whether you were trying to deceive Therngul or you were being honest, if you could let him know, and just roll a d20 so you're not giving anything away. So, <clears throat> Tridex has rolled a five. If you are trying to like deceive or persuade, add your modifiers to it and send Todd the total. I am going to roll a d20 as well. Okay. And Todd, I'm gonna message you my modifier. Okay, and so <clears throat> if my roll is higher, I would know whether he's being truthful or not. And uh, if you could let me know, please, Todd, through private message. Got it. I get to play too, you know. <sighs> I appreciate your choice, Tridex. <sighs> but now let me ask you, is this tea for Tridex or do you plan on Serving General Blood Blood. I serve no one but you. That's what I like to hear. That is what I like to hear. And I look forward to watching the family drama that will unfold tonight. Clearly, you and your, uh, should I say, uh, adopted child have a difference of opinion. Welcome back to you, Tridex, and I wish you the best of luck. I am certainly on your team, rooting for you. Thank you. Excellent, everyone. Then these are our contestants for episode three of round three of Crucible of Fate. <sighs> Spicy. I am excited. This is going to be one for the history books. Let's get started, shall we? We will begin with five minutes of conversation between our contestants. This is such a great opportunity to watch them interact and start to scheme, knowing full well that this could be the last time they ever converse in a group for three of them will surely perish within the next couple of hours. You have five minutes, and it begins now. Elzin, uh, first things first, is going to turn his back abruptly to Tridex, and then walk over to Death Trap. I, I guess I know what I'm doing today. How about you? Uh, I'm killing a beast, then I'll deal with him. On your side. Yes, I hope we all agree to defeat the monster first. I know I said the same thing last round, and I have every intention of doing so. But unfortunately, Santiago had other intentions. So I hope none of you are a Santiago and try to backstab others while we're focusing on the monster. Wait. I think we're all pretty... Uh, pretty powerful in our own right that I think we should be able to take it down within a few rounds, no? Are you the guy who did the thing with the dragon and the shield? Uh, yes, that was me. Oh my god! It was... Oh my god! I've been waiting, I was hoping I'm, I'm so glad we get to play with you today, Dante, but I truly want to have a word with Merrick at some point today. 
think we might be cut to the same cloth. Yes, I have watched you as well during your rounds, and you do seem quite an interesting character. And I hope you come out more often than Ellison. Less chatter, more business. We'll see. Speaking of business, I agree. We need to defeat this monster. If we're to survive round four at all, we need the resources that this monster can provide us. Let us focus on this monster first. And then we worry about each other. Tridek just stays silent with focusing on the monster. And then all of a sudden, he turns to everybody. He's like, I think we need to kill the monster. Otherwise, we have no chance. And I know some of you won't believe me, but I will say, I will use my actions to prove to you that truth. And then he takes a step back. Allison snaps around and like holds up his hand and you watch as like this like little sprite manifests and he's like, don't worry, Tridex. I have a fate sphere with your name on it if you act out of line. Tridex uh... responds, (laughs) I liked you better when you were a child. Mr. Oh, Harrison stop. will walk over to uh, to Dante and uh, over where uh, where Death Trap is, and and uh, I'll kind of grasp Dante's arm like in a, an embrace, say, "How fair you, brother?" I have been better, but as I said, I think I've come to terms. I was hoping I escaped on time, but it seems Merrick has latched itself onto my soul. So let's hope that uh, you know. I remain here myself and not him. I'm with both of you to the end. I look at Death Trap and I give him a, a curt acknowledgement, a nod. I said, the monster then. I walk up to Ellison at this point and I close my eyes and slowly nod at him and I say, I, I know you feel betrayed, but keep in mind It's in our best interest to survive. And in order to survive, we still need to work together. Don't turn your back on me yet. uh, With one hand, Ellison is going to grab onto Shay's pinky. And then with the other hand, he's going to flick Brand on Tridex's forehead. (laughs) I'm not stupid. Just upset. Disappointed. Uh, Shay would like to go to Death Trap and give him a salute. It's good to see you again. I'm glad the gods favored you. I agree. Let's kill this monster together. Get your boy on a leash. Don't think you, see me, you see me take a step towards you trying to scare you. <laughs> All right, everyone, All right. calm down. Save it for the game, huh? It's time to end our little conversation and get to the business at hand. At this point, I would like to bring your attention to the display cases behind me. And as he says that, you all see the tiered gift shop item display cases grow out of the shadows on the ground with so much pre-game drama going on here. I just want to play my part and add some drama as well by giving you these delightful trinkets that may be of benefit to you during the game. Some of them will look familiar. One is new. So in tier one, what you all see is an agate of defense, which is a polished red stone, and it provides plus one to AC as long as it is put on an item that is not already enchanted. So any mundane 
uh, clothing, armor, or item. And as long as that item is being worn or carried, you have plus one to your armor class. The second item in tier one is a chime of opening. So with the chime of opening, you strike it as an action and point it at an object that's within 120 feet or up to 120 feet. And any one lock or latch will be magically opened. It has 10 charges. It doesn't recharge. And uh, should the 10th and final charge be used, it just dissolves into dust. In tier two, the first item is an amethyst of enchantment. This amethyst provides a plus two to attack and damage rolls to any mundane weapon, holy symbol, arcane focus, any other item that is used to generate an attack roll, any one item this can be affixed to, to provide the plus two to damage and attack rolls. The second item in tier two is a ring of resistance. And this one is a ring of necrotic resistance. So as long as you are wearing the ring, you have resistance to necrotic damage. And in tier three, I feel like I need to put these on sale here. They just haven't moved from the shelves. So you know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm tempted to do. And feel free to talk to me about this in your intermission action. I might be willing to drop the price from three rolls on the Wheel of Consequence to two. First one is a Wand of Paralysis. Seven charges. One charge will allow you as an action to emit a thin blue ray up to 60 feet at one creature. That creature must make a DC 15 constitution saving throw or be paralyzed for one minute. And they can repeat this saving throw at the end of every turn. And finally, a Vorpal Weapon. This Vorpal Weapon is plus three to attack and damage rolls. It can take the form of any weapon that you choose. It ignores resistance for the damage type that it does. So if you make it a slashing weapon, it ignores slashing resistance. On a roll of a natural 20, it will cut off the head of your target if that target does not have legendary resistances or legendary actions. And those are the items within the gift shop, everyone. I really want to see some of these items move. I'm beginning to think that perhaps I have bad taste or I'm out of touch with the needs of my contestants and that hurts me deeply. I like to think I'm still hip to what's current, you know? All right. That is everything that we should need to deal with before we determine the order in which you're going to take your intermission actions. Just for clarity, remember, you can determine your initiative order through a standard dex-based initiative roll. You can use a perception skill check or an intelligence based ability check. We'll do these rolls in order, starting top left down to bottom right. So Dante, if you could go first. Yep. An eight for Dante Wolfhowl. Death Trap. Seven for Death Trap. He's yep. keeping it. Yes. Ellison. Okay. Uh, and then I'll roll guidance. 13 on the perception plus guidance of 4 for 17. Shay. I would also like to 
guide myself. There we go. 18 plus 3 for 21. Sir Barristan Bell. 17 and Tridex. 6. Final roll for Tridex. Yep. Make yourselves comfortable here in the Fate's Hand Tavern as if it was your own home. I will call upon you as you are needed. Before we go. Yes, she. Ellison? Yes? Do you have some gold I would be able to use? Um, for our game? Yeah. Here you go. And he just like reaches into escrow and just hands her like a little piggy bank of gold. All right, everyone. <clears throat> we will begin our intermission actions. Best of luck to all of you. We will see you as a group post IAs. Greetings, Shay. It is time for your first intermission action. Tell me, what would you like to do? Greetings, Therambul. I would like to go to the Archivist. Knowledge is power, and I feel like I'm going to need all the power I need. <laughs> no problem. At the mention of the word Archivist, you see the Fate's Hand Tavern fade away into the shadows. And you find yourself floating through this grand archway. And as you get to the threshold, you can see on the left these massive piles of bones, and on the right, a seemingly endless stack of bookshelves containing books and tomes of all size and make. As you hit the threshold, you feel a presence enter into your mind as Abrangaal emerges from the shadows. And at this point, I need you to make either a persuasion check, an investigation check, or an intimidation check. I would like to guide myself for this role as well, please. Okay. I'm going to add the, the d4. Okay. Total of 18 currently, which is enough to unlock tier 1. So you're sticking with that? Yes. Okay. As the archives come into focus, so too does the consciousness that enters your mind as you hear Abrunga All's voice within your mind. <sighs> she Falcon Sun, how delightful to see you. Of course, you are the first to visit me today. So please brace yourself for what I am about to show you. And at this moment, you feel a flood of imagery and emotion and sensations wash over your consciousness. And you appear to be looking out of the eyes of another creature. You see that it's in some sort of laboratory quite dark as it appears to be uh, involved in some sort of experimentation. You can see beakers of liquid, various ingredients, uh, jewels of all sorts of cuts and levels of finish. There are many different odors that are wafting throughout this area. And you feel as though you have just accomplished something magnificent, as if you were going to live eternally, or at least exist eternally, as living is no longer a valid description of the existence that you will have from now on. It then flashes as you see yourself fighting a variety of, of humanoids, whether uh, in a variety of terrains and situations. You feel yourself emitting great psychic energy in a massive cone, dropping several creatures to their knees and then falling onto their faces as they're no longer able to withstand the pressure put on their minds. 
You then, to your own horror, see hands reach out, gray skin, as they grab onto the, the hair of some poor soul in front of you, as its head is brought right up to your face, and you hear the cracking of a skull and this sweet, sweet sensation of gelatinous, like liquid in your mouth as you consume the knowledge of this creature. A whole host of spells are at your beck and call as you feel that you are a powerful wielder of magic as well. And in case it's not clear, you'll be facing the Illithilich this evening. You have advantage on all of your attacks against the Illithilich, and it has disadvantage on any targeted rolls against you. With the 15 back to your roll, or sorry, 18 total, you have unlocked tier one. Do you wish to know more about the creature or the room? I would like to know the room, please. Very well. Just follow me. I have something to show you. You see uh, Abrunga all extend his hand out as he appears to be floating away from you uh, for just a moment as you too begin to, to follow him. As these books go passing by, moving vertically and, and uh, horizontally. And then as he finishes his grasp, he grabs on to this one book, flips it open. And uh, what you can see, and actually I'm going to do this now. Okay. I had to put the lava oh. in just to get it packed in, oh. Mike. <laughs> I was like, that took me a second. I was looking at all the boxes and I, I was, oh. <laughs> yeah, I just want to give them a little bit of a heart palpitations. Is the floor lava? Deep? <laughs> so in this book, you get the layout of uh, this two-tiered room. And you can see that uh, the title is tomb of the fallen you can see that this here is level one and um, these here are sarcophagi that are represented by these uh, two gems so they're actually like five foot by ten foot sarcophagi that are uh, put in each of these like antechambers here it's only 45 feet across and then 15 foot squares. Down below in this kind of sub level, you can see that there are four chests and um, there are matching colors of uh, white, red, green, and blue. With a 15, you would learn that to get to this lower area, you can drop through any of these sarcophagi that are, they're currently open, but all you can see within is shadow. You don't see any sign of any remains, just a shadowy fog that just kind of sits about six inches down from the lip of each sarcophagus. Once you touch or enter inside of any of those sarcophagi, you are transported to a similar color. You would also learn with a 15 that these chests two of them contain treasure and two of them contain portals that exit to the Fate's Hand Tavern. And with that, you are given your consciousness back as you return to the entranceway of the archives. I hope that this has been 
a rewarding trip for you, she falcon song. Do you have any questions for me? I do, Abranga Ul. The professor seemed to know you and seemed to have something against you. He even told Karzak of it. What does he have over you? It is not what he has over me. Actually, hold on. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus my guidance. Okay. All right. Total of 13. He's not hostile towards you, so... <clears throat> no, quite the contrary. He has my finger. Yeah. <laughs> It is not that he has something against me. It's that a long time ago he stole from me. We were at one time collaborators, researchers, looking for ways to unlock eternal life. I made some discoveries and entrusted them rather mistakenly, I now see, to one I believed was my friend. He took that from me and placed some sort of what I can only deduce is a magical enchantment. I can't remember exactly what, but I know he's hiding something within my own mind. And clearly, he used my information for his own gain and has succeeded. Excuse me, I must calm down. As you can see, I am rather vexed by this situation. And I would be eternally, hopefully, grateful if you were to recover my notes from him. Those notes, they would be in his laboratory now? I would suspect something that valuable would not leave his person. I understand. I will do this for you. In life, I was never quite fond of undead. But I have no illusions of grandeur here, and I will take all the allies I can get. I will do this for you. Undeath has become much more prevalent on Araya over the past 2,000 years. It is not synonymous with evil. I understand that now. Next. Balance is important, as I'm starting to see with my counterparts. has been a lovely visit, Shay Falcon Song. I appreciate your concern and your offer to assist. Until we meet again. Indeed. And with that, you feel his consciousness leave your own as he fades into shadow. And suddenly, you are once again in front of Therangul. I hope that was beneficial to you, Shay. This concludes your first intermission action. Greetings, Ellison. 
it is your turn for your first intermission action. What would you like to do? Well, it looks like I've only got one friend in this fight. I think it's time to make some more. I'd like to parlay. Mm, I with see. Who would you like to parlay with? You do get to pick two as you are the first to choose the parlay intermission action. May I, may I split the parlay into two? Certainly. Who would you like to talk to first? We would like to speak first with Mary. Hmm. Dante Wolfgang. Let's see if Merrick is available to speak to you. Greetings, Dante Wolfhowl. I am afraid that this invitation is not for you. Merrick has been summoned to a parlay circle by Ellison Halford. Can Merrick accept or will you refuse? I will refuse. I am in control of this body, not Merrick. I will have say over its actions. I am sorry, Ellison, but I don't know what kind of conversations you would have with Merrick, but I want no part of it. And there you have it. I understand. Ellison, thank you for your time, Dante. Well, it appears that Dante still has some measure of control over Merrick. We'll see if that continues. Who would you like to summon as your second? I think I'd like to speak with Death Trap. Well, I look forward to this conversation. Greetings, Death Trap. You have been summoned to a parlay circle by Ellison Halford. Tell me, do you accept the invitation or refuse it? I am afraid my telepathic abilities are very limited. I cannot hear you. I refuse. Ah, interesting. Very well. We will see you shortly, Death Trap. I permit me a moment, and please don't take this as any sort of patronization. For surely it is not meant that way. I was going to say, Ellison, please take this as a compliment. You can almost smell the fear that they have of you that they don't even want to be in your presence for fear that they will be enchanted by what you have to say or do. Ferengul, I understand that Ellison had some words with you, but this is all just a game. I know they worry about what we are able to do. And I know, had I not taken this preparation first, they would be planning behind my back. This is all simply a game to be played and won. A bold step then, huh? You have denied your potential enemies a valuable resource. Well played. We'll see you momentarily. We will see you soon. Greetings, Sir Barristan Bell. Great to see you again. Tell me, what would you like to do for your first intermission action? My first action, I would like to go to the Archivist. The Archivist. At the mention of the Archivist, the Fates Hand Tavern and Thermgul fade away. And you now see the threshold of the Archives, the Grand Archway of the archives passing over you. And as you hit the middle of it, you can see these massive piles of bones on the left and the seemingly endless stacks of bookshelves containing all manner of tomes. You feel the presence of a Brunga all enter into your consciousness as he physically emerges from the shadows at this point, I need you to give me 
either an investigation, a persuasion, or an intimidation check, please. It was a natural one. Okay. Anything Shit. you can do to adjust it? Yeah, I, I can't waste a, uh, a face here on that. So no. Okay. You feel this consciousness enter into your own and you're almost overwhelmed by a flood of anger and impatience and sadness and a bit of hope but you hear a brongal say sir Perston, i apologize i am not mentally fit to interact with another sentient being at the moment. Uh, my previous visit has unsettled me. And uh, as he says that, you feel his presence linger away, or not linger, but move away from your own. As you find yourself back in the Fate Sand Tavern in front of Therimgul, that was a bit quick, Sir Bersten. I got all the information I needed. All right. Then we will see you for your second and final intermission actions. Uh, greetings, Dante. It is uh, delightful to see you once again. I think that, that was a very wise move you took, not speaking with Ellison. Thank you. You, you know, I am I feel Maddox's presence always on the edge of my mind trying to take over, and I know I cannot always control it. But if I can control an action, it is me, not him. It's good to maintain control of oneself. Otherwise, you're just a passenger in life, right? Exactly. See, so you know. I know very well, yes. In that case, though, what would you like to do for your first intermission action? I would like to parlay with a uh, certain death trap. Very well. Let me fetch him for you. Greetings, death trap. You have been summoned to a parlay circle by Dante Wolf Howell. Do you accept the invitation or refuse it? I accept. Very well. In that case, Dante, you have three minutes and it begins now. Thank you for taking the opportunity to speak with me, Death Trap. I will keep it short as we are pressed for time. We are both followers of Praxis. We have taken different oaths, but for the same deity. And I know you have your history with the other three that are gracing their presence with us today. I trust that you would be with us without meaning me and Sir Barristan, not Merrick. But if you team up with us, we will look after each other's backs. You have your auras, I have mine. Even if we're separated, we're buffed by them. And we kill the monster, but if any one of them should backstab, I will not hesitate to exact vengeance on your behalf. As I'm sure you would want your own vengeance on Tridex. Damn it, Merrick, I'm in control. I will go after the monster. I will fight on your side. Um, I can tell you that I understand if one of them happens to leave, that kind of puts me uh, opposed to you or you opposed to me because the two of you will need to get out. But let's let's hope that we can stop them from leaving the room. Um, bluntly, if one of them goes down, I don't care which one, I'm okay with you and Barristan leaving the room. I'll take care of the other two. Well, I, yeah. pre I appreciate those words, uh, and I don't intend to just escape like that. But given the options of what we might be facing, I would be lying if I said I'm not a little bit nervous. Um, but yes. I would like to make sure they don't escape. I'd rather do this the old-fashioned way of combat. And 
Should one of them go down, I would assume it would make taking the other two easier, um, since they are soul bonded. But I would imagine they would break one of their soul bonds right now. I would think maybe Tridex would be pushed out, considering their animosity with each other. But they've kind, might... please. They've they've kind of played this game before, that they're against each other. Um, they still work together. And they yes. are a good. They are a good team together. So don't let them fool you. Oh, um, no. I take it with a grain of salt. And just just so you know, as long as my spirits are there, if I hit them, they can't heal. So nice. you okay. should know. And if you talk to Barris, and let him know. We'll definitely do. Okay. So thank you again for taking the time out of your day to speak with me. All right, I'm sensing this is the natural end to your conversation. Um, <clears throat> I hope you all got what you needed, and uh, this officially ends this intermission action. Greetings, Death Trap. It is time now for your first intermission action. What would you like to do? I would like to go to the gift shop. Gift shop. As you mention the words gift shop, behind Theramgul, out of the shadows rise the display cases of the tiered items, and of course, behind those, you see the shelves stocked full of standard gear and magical gear alike. A shopper, and uh, our first shopper of the evening, so you do get one free reroll of any uh, tiered item consequence. Please tell me you're interested in this Vorpo weapon, Death Trap. Don't let me down. So Death Trap walks up to the Vorpo weapon, reaches his hand out, stops. You said to talk to you about a deal here. About maybe only two rolls on the Wheel of Consequences. So you'd like to bargain, is what you're saying. I would like to bargain. In that case, give me a persuasion check, please. 16. Final roll? Yep, final roll. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, Death Trap, I, I do have a bit of a... Uh, flair for the dramatic uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't have been open to being persuaded to alter the cost of this item but now that we're here in the moment I just don't really feel like that would be fair to the other contestants I do hope that this doesn't influence you wanting to purchase the item though. you do have a free reroll after all true a lesser consequence, maybe. He reaches for the Vorpal again. I think Dalon was giving me a sign. I'll deal with your consequences. You can deal with mine. And maybe I'll be able to take off Tridex's fucking head. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. Okay. Marina. And I want it permanently. Oh, permanently. Yes. Commitment death trap. All right. Oh, that's a freebie, isn't it? Oh, it is. And I love seeing natural 20s on the Vorpal weapon. Oh, this is a good start, huh? Scott free. There you go. There's my free one, huh? Let's... All right. Let's do number two. A nine. Uh, minus two strength. I'll take it. An eight. Charisma and con saving throws at disadvantage. I'll take it. That wasn't so bad, huh, Death Trap? No, that wasn't so bad. And since it's not so bad, how about if I take that egg of the defense permanently? 
Oh, I like where this is going. I'm done playing games with them. Yes, Death Trap, yes. I sense a change in your personality and your attitude. Fate is shifting. Look at that. Oh, Praxis is with you. Well, that's still two versions of it, right? I would still have to remove Curse twice Um, to get rid of both of those. That's the way we've done it in the past. That's what I thought. Yeah, but it doesn't... Yeah, the good news is it doesn't affect you twice during. Right, right. I just want to verify that I, I still have to remove it twice to get rid of it. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Permanent agate of defense plus one to AC and a vorpal weapon. Uh, so which form is your vorpal weapon going to take? It will be a longsword. Longsword. And is it okay if I name that longsword of death so that people don't know it's the vorpal at first <laughs> until it does something? You can name it whatever you like. I mean, okay. if it's sheathed. There's no need for anyone to know that you even have it. All right. I got some uh, shopping to do. Um, I do have a question. When I when I shop, do you equip when you shop or do you have to equip in a prep IA? Uh, no, anything that you purchase, you can equip. Okay. And a tune, right? Yes. Attunement okay, is cool. instantaneous upon purchase. All right. Great. So I'm going to um, call these out because there's, <laughs> remember, we killed the Nabasu, so I've got some coin. He's going to sell the Helm of Brilliance. Um, he's going to sell armor. And then he's getting plate armor, adamantine, and plus one put on it. Um, he's going to get Gauntlets of Ogre Power, um, Oil of Sharpness, Oil of Slipperiness, Potion of Invulnerability, Potion of Speed. Um, He's going to (laughs) get, like I said, there's a lot. Wow, that that didn't happen right. Um, He's going to get three potions of fire breath. um, Spell scroll, enhance ability, spell scroll, spirit shroud. He's going to get a spell scroll of revivify, a spell scroll of find greater steed. He's going to get two spell rot tattoos of shield um, and two spell rot tattoos of counter spell. Very well. You are certainly equipped and ready for many situations now. Death Trap, does this conclude your purchases here at the gift shop? Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I got the... Most of that is correct. He is also going to get figurines of wondrous power, golden lions, and I have a question about those, um, and an ion stone of leadership... And he's actually getting two spell rock tattoos of counter spell. My fault. Um, and a scroll of destructive wave. Again, I will send this to Remy. I will send it, you know, both ways. The figurines are two. I thought it was one figurine called out two lions. It's two figurines, and you can summon one or two. If he has a steed, can he only summon one of those lions? Because I know there's a limit to two animals. I thought that the. Figurines were a pair, though. Like, I thought they were one item as a pair. You buy it, they always come as a pair, but when I read it, it says you can summon either one or two at the si- with at the same time. So I, I just wanted to clarify mm-hmm. so we don't have to go back. So I think we said that you can have two sources of summons. So if you had your okay. steed, and then the second one would be the figurines, I think you could still pull out two. Okay. Excellent. Ah, uh, Death Trap. You've brought my excitement level from like 11 up to 13 here. I hope that you have great luck and success. And of course, you use that success to serve me. I mean, that goes without <laughs> say, right? No All right. Comment. I understand. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, we'll see you shortly. All right. Greetings, Tridex, my loyal servant. How wonderful to see you again. What would you like to do for your first intermission action? I would like to check out the shop. 
See if that blade is still around. Or to see who I need to kill to get it. I see. Just one moment. And out of the shadows rise the display cases for the tiered items, as well as all of the shelves for the more mundane items. You see right away that from tier one, the agate of defense has been sold. And from tier three, the Vorpal weapon has also been purchased. Ah, this is what I feared, but it should make for an interesting game. I'm not interested in any of the other tiered items, but I do have some mundane and less magical items to grab. Um, So out of character, I'm selling Dust of Dryness. I'm selling um, my uh, Vicious... uh, Sorry, dust, dust of dryness, and that gets me up to sixteen hundred. Yeah, um, we, we're gonna put the list up of okay. everything that you sell. So if you even if you just want to cover the magical buying. items, yeah, we'll we'll okay. put the the cost and everything up. I'm gonna buy a scroll of mirror image, a potion of psychic resistance, a potion of heroism, one scroll of remove curse and malice which is a poison oh okay and that poison is listed in the dmg it has it okay what does malice do um so it's an ingestion poison which means i should be able to either throw it or blow it on someone um dc 15 con save i believe or they're blinded for a minute but it's ingestion. Uh, yeah, it just says br- you can breathe it in. Okay. It's not... Uh, On D&D Beyond, it's listed as an inhaled. In- sorry, inhaled. Okay. I I can redo that if you want me to. No, no, no. That's okay. Okay. So with the inhaled poison, so does it say something like as an action, you can blow it towards... Like, how does the inhale work? Are there rules for that? I mean, I I have it. I'll read it real quick. Inhaled poison. The poisons are powders or gases that take effect when inhaled. Blowing the powder or releasing the gas subjects creatures in a five-foot cube to its effect. The resulting cloud dissipates immediately afterward. Holding one's breath is ineffective against inhaled poisons as they affect nasal membranes, tear ducts, and other parts of the body. And then specifically malice as a creature subjected to this poison must succeed on a DC 15 con save or become poisoned for an hour. The poisoned creature is blinded. Um, Okay. So would yeah. that not affect you as well? It, I, it's in a five foot zone. It says a five foot cube. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have a range. It just says a five foot cube, and it also doesn't say if you take an action or whatever. I mean, I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it, it wouldn't be- make. Yeah. Okay. So you just take an action to to blow it into their face. You want it to be an action? Okay. Well, yeah, I feel like it's a use item, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Works for me. but there's no mechanics for it, eh? Like, there's no uh, attack I, roll or anything like that? Uh-uh. It just says Save. blowing or inhaled. It doesn't really say how you get there. I mean... Okay. But it has a saving throw, so it's all right. It has a saving a throw, and it doesn't have a range either. Um, Five feet. So I would. Well, so what I'm hearing is that I can basically use my action to blow it in someone's face, um, and then it just affects them. That's what I'm inclined to go with, barring any other suggestions. Okay, anything else to purchase? Oh no. Looking forward to this. Excellent. Okay, we will see you for your second and your final IA shortly. Greetings, Shay. It is time for your second and then your final intermission actions. 
what would you like to do for your second one? I would like to visit the gift shop, please. No problem. <clears throat> Out of the shadows grow the display cases and the shelves. You can see on the display cases that the Agate of Defense from Tier 1 has been sold, as has the Vorpal weapon from Tier 3. What are you interested in purchasing, Shay? I would like to sell a few things as well as buy a few things. Okay, so those will all be listed in between us here as we're talking. Uh, as she grabs the uh, dust of sneezing and choking, she's going to hold it in her hands and be like, Dante didn't find a use for this. I think I might have an idea. Um, but everything else. Okay. Um, I believe... Um, <laughs> no. Nope. No okay. consequence items. <laughs> Are you sure? Nope. You yes, never... I'm sure. <sighs> Personally, I find shopping to be therapeutic. I've never regretted any of my purchases, but I have regretted not buying things previously. Maybe if I was the first one here, but you can't have both. Hmm. Okay. Um, for my third, I would like to wait for my teammates to be ready to prepare. If that is okay, we'd like to prepare together. Okay. Sounds good. I will mark you down as prepare and we will do it as the final one does there yep. okay and just to be clear from your point of view that's you and ellison and tridex preparing yeah. together yes <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you no problem see you in a bit all right greetings ellison it is time for your second and your third intermission actions. I have been advised by Shay that you're going to be doing some preparing later. So what would you like to do for your second intermission action? I'd like to go to the shop, please. At the mention of the shop, the shelves and display cases apparate out of the shadows behind Thermgol in front of you. And you can see right away that in Tier 1, the Agate of Defense is gone, and in Tier 3, the Vorpal weapon is gone. What has caught your eye today, Ellison? Well, um, I'd like to ask you a question first, Thermgol. Sure. In Round 1, um, I was able to sell some items and get a decent amount of money. But, but it seems that the prices have changed on a few things. Um, and he's going to hold up his blue elemental gem or, uh, and say, um, I was wondering, could I perhaps trade this in for something of lesser value? So was that that was out of character? And this is one of the items that yeah. changed in price? Yeah. So this shot up a bunch. Um, so it's way more expensive now. Okay. Um, but I would, but it is the equivalent of a seventh level spell scroll because of in, in price. I am trying to exchange it for a fifth level spell scroll. Okay, but we did say for items that were purchased, it would keep it. Would keep their old price. Yeah. So, but so even price wise, a fifth level spell scroll in the old price would still be cheaper than what this is. So I'm okay. just that's okay. kind of where I'm going Got with it. that. Yep, that sounds good. But legit. you didn't buy that, right? You got it. You No, I bought that. I had uh, three thousand I had three thousand okay. gold pieces, so I bought a okay. bunch of elemental gems. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Then uh we'll jump back in here. Uh yeah, that seems reasonable to me. Okay. Um then I would like to sell a couple of things that I got off of Akari in the last game. Um, I have a disguise kit that I got from Lucius in the first round. 
And do you want me to go through the items that I'm... No, we'll, we'll put the list up. And then I'm going to go ahead and go with all of these. And he's just going to, like, put down a piece of paper. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, I will then, in addition to what's on the list, like, I... I think I'd like to buy an additional scroll of remove curse, if possible. I'm not See? sure that my team will be making it out of this as a team. Mm, there's a very good chance of that. It's wise to take precautions. Anything else for you today at the gift shop, Ellison? Did, did you say that the wand paralysis served me well in the last round. Um, did you say it would be brought down to two consequences? I, I said that I might be open to being persuaded. Uh, are you going to try to twist my rubber arm? Certainly. I think that the, I think the wand served me well and it will serve me well again if I can get it. In that case, then uh, go ahead and give me a persuasion check please uh may i add guidance to this or no yeah excellent um how's a 21 plus a d4 um and this is um the minimum i can roll is a 21 because i am a eloquence bard with silver tongue silver tongue makes any roll of nine or less a 10 min off okay <clears throat> So, so 25, total 20. of 25, final... Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I think you may have caught me at a moment of weakness here, Ellison. I think I'm willing to drop it to two consequences here. Just for the entertainment value it will provide to myself and the eyes of truth. Go ahead and make your first... Uh, actually, do you want to take it permanently or temporarily? Temporarily. Fifteen. Can't dodge or dash as an action. Yeah, I'll keep that. Okay, then your second roll. Fourteen. Minus two charisma. Um, t -t 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 -t. I will... Oh, it's temporary. Shit, I should have taken it permanently. Uh, um... I... Will <laughs> I am very glad this is causing you such consternation. There are consequences for choices, little one. And uh, I'm going to keep it. Hmm, maybe you are maturing. In that case, you are the proud owner, at least temporarily, of this here Wand of Paralysis. Any other purchases? I don't, I don't think so, Therangul. Um, but I do, I do know that in my next preparations, I'll be needing some guidance from the Great Betrayer. I don't want those two to know what I'm preparing. So perhaps I could prepare the spell now. Um, and above table, um, I will be using dedication ceremony, uh, dedicating both of them to the Great Betrayer. Or the Great Deceiver, sorry. Um, and we talked about this rolling the deception check early. Yep. Okay, so, go ahead and do the deception roll. Okay, similarly with Silver Tongue, the lowest I can get is 17. Um, the first is a 17. <laughs> That'll be for Shay. And then the next will be a 18, and that'll be for Tridents. 
Okay, and just for clarity for the viewers, uh, if you just want to let them know what your goal okay. is with this ceremony. So I will be um, using the ceremony spell um, to go ahead and devote both Tridex and Shay to the Great Deceiver. Um, this will mechanically give them the benefit of the cer dedication ceremony. Um, but role play wise, I am not wanting them to know as it will be flavored as dedications to their respective deities. Okay, and then what are the benefits gained with that? The or what are the mechanical the implications of it? So. Good. Um, the dedication ceremony gives them an additional D4 when they perform. Oh, so for the next 24 hours, whenever the target makes a saving throw, it can roll a D4 and add the number rolled to the save. A creature can benefit from this right only once. And now, give me, just give me a performance check too, just to have okay. something uh, to play this with. This one here. I don't get any fun stuff on. So let's see. That was a 21. Okay, 21. And so with sneaky, the sneaky words play. that you speak during this, because um, you're going to be doing it in front of them, right? So yes. if they ask questions about it, I'll let them roll insight. But otherwise... Sure. Yeah. Yep, sounds good. Um, easy peasy. Okay, just hold on. <clears throat> so as you... Uh, Finish letting Therngul know what your plans are. I just need a second here. Can I ask you a personal question, Allison? Um, uh, sure. Um, anything, I suppose. Where did your faith in the Great Deceiver begin? How did this grow within you? Someone once told me that if you can't make friends, you make friends. Uh, and people don't trust me much. So you do what you got to do to not be by yourself. No one wants to be alone. So I make sure I never am. And if I can make someone, even someone as powerful as you, Thermgul, believe what I say simply by speaking, I feel that is right by the Great Deceiver. Well said, Ellison. Well said. And I appreciate your faith in me. I'll see you. I suppose. But. Yes. Um. Oh. I suppose. Listen, might have. To revisit what he truly believes. Perhaps we can guide him some. We may only be figments of his imagination, but we have our sway. And he takes a nice long bow. I hope it is clear at this point that I'm back on your side. You have regained my favor and I will be rooting for both of you. Thermgul, um, sir, I have one more thing I'd like to do prior to the prep IA. Um, and I'm going to have a set of Nalzor's magical or marvelous pigments. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to just put the brand there, the, the brand marking on the inside of my shield. Um, the Ulra will be in the front. 
I know who is watching me. And and then another deep bow. Excellent. I trust that, at least for today, our secret remains so. Um, it will go wherever I go and nowhere else. It will not leave my lips. And that is no deception. I feel like we have created a new connection here, you and I. I will see you uh, during your preparation. I will see you soon. Greetings, Sir Bearston Bell. It is time for your second and then, of course, your third and final intermission action. What would you like to do for your second? Um, I would like to go to the gift shop. No problem. <clears throat> right this way. And Theramgul does a quick turn, his red and gold cloak kind of flaring up behind him as the display cases rise up out of the shadows. You can see now that in tier one, the agate of defense has already been sold. And then in tier three, both items, the wand of paralysis and the vorpal weapon have also been sold. Is there anything here that catches your eyes, Sir Barristan? Hmm. Not out of the case. Um, I do want to, again, sell all the, uh, the, some of the money items I had and I sent the, the list of things I would like to purchase already. I can go over those if we need. So the list will be actually up on the screen right now as we okay. do this part, but maybe just some of the key magic items if you want to list the things you've sold and or purchased. Okay, I sold my my chain armor, my long my regular mundane long sword, my crossbow, my hand crossbow and my bolts and four regular healing potions. And I purchased um, a brand new sparkly white set of uh, splint armor uh, for upgrade, um, three greater healing potions, um, a third level spell scroll of um, spirit guardians, a second level spell scroll of spiritual weapon, and um, the figure in the power golden lions for 600. And what I Yep, yeah, got it. There's two, <laughs> right? Okay, I, that's what I, I, I figured. So so um, for uh, thematic reasons, what uh, Sir Barrison would like to do is is somehow, because Lion is is the namesake of my, the, my king that I came from, it was the uh, Aldric Lions, and I have the, the, the lion motif on my shield. So I'd like to have the, the, the lions kind of worked into the armor so I can pull them off and throw them to kind of come alive. So. Just almost like almost like mantles, but they're the figurines of the of the figure's power. Cool, cool, very cool. And that's it for your purchases. That is it. Um, this has been very helpful. Excellent. Well done. I feel that you are quite prepared for the battle to come. As prepared as I'm gonna be. And for your third intermission action. Um, I would like to parlay with a Dante. Dante Wolfowl, you have been summoned to a parlay circle by Sir Barristan Bell. Do you accept or refuse the invitation? Of course I do. Which one? Accept. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to be clear about these things, you know. Don't want any misunderstandings. In that case, you have three minutes, Sir Barristan Bell, and it begins now. Uh, okay, Dante, I went to the archivist. He was uh, he was no help to me. He gave me no information. Um, I did go to the item shop. Quite a few items are missing from the tiered levels. Uh, the Agate Defense is gone, and both tier three items are gone. Oh, that was dangerous. The Vorpal Sword and the uh, a Wand of Paralysis. That's unfortunate. Yes. So, um, yeah, I did my, my shopping. I got some two spell scrolls. Um, anything you found out? 
Uh, well, I've only had the opportunity to speak with Death Trap, and he is on board with looking out for each other, uh, meaning you, me, and himself. Uh, he also did mention, should one of the three fall, meaning of Mama Shea and her boys, then he would not care if we actually escape the puzzle. He can take care of the other two himself, which is impressive, um, but I don't want to leave him hanging just like that. Um, so if it comes down to that and we are taking down one of them, at that point, I might as well say we try to finish the job. Unless they, of course, try to escape, which we should try to uh, prevent. However, if the wand of paralysis is taken, that's a little terrifying. That is that is what scares me. Magic um, is not my specialty, um, but I, I feel confident that we can uh, we can burn down, hopefully, a magic user, and then then kind of move through and take care of business. I repeat, yes. Yeah, but let's see what the room uh, and monster out combination is, and take it from there. But I do. I do hope we take down this monster, honestly. It would be it's, nice glory and rewards, should we? It would be nice not to be attacked first for for once. <laughs> but keep your shield up just in case. <laughs> the shield is up. All right. I'm going to the shop uh, when it's my turn. I'm going to buy the plate armor and possibly a tattoo. Um, was looking for that agate of defense, but now that's gone. But I'm thinking if it should make any sense trying to go for that chime of opening, it would help us try to escape should the, how do you say, should hit the fan. Yeah, and there's also the amethyst of enchantment as well. I cannot use that since I already have the, uh, the, the magic agate. weapon. No, not the agate, oh, the, right. the magic weapon, and I can't use it on it can only be used on mundane items. And gentlemen, that is your three minutes. This intermission action has now come to an end. Sir Bersten Bell, that concludes your intermission actions. We will see you on the other side. Which does make it your turn, Dante Wolfowl. I assume it is Dante I'm still speaking with. Yes, for now it is me and I hope it stays that way for as long as it can be. You mentioned the gift shop. Is this what you would like to do for your second intermission action? That is better. The display cases <clears throat> and storage shelves appear out of the shadows as Theramgul takes a step to the side and looks warmly at the tiered items that are left. Can I interest you in anything here, Dante? You were talking about the chime. Uh, yes. Uh... So to understand correctly, that chime can open up to 120 feet any lock, magical, not magical, regardless of conditions to open, it opens it. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, yes, barring any extreme magical protection, perhaps, but uh, for here tonight, uh, yeah. And how many charges does it have? I believe it's 10. If I'm oh, not 10. Okay. okay, in that case, I shall go ahead and get the chime. Would you like it temporarily or permanently? Permanently. Five. As uh, Theramgul is prattling on about something to you, everything goes silent and uh, he notices your head kind of tilt to the side and he switches to speaking to you telepathically as you are now deafened. Interesting. Um, okay, I will keep that, obviously. We no need to reroll anything. <clears throat> no, Man, it's I a will... tier one item. Yeah. It's just one roll. The chime of opening is now yours. Okay. 
Um, I will also like to sell a few items. Uh, some of the stuff that I got from Santiago, the ribbons, uh, the short bow that he, the vicious short bow that he had, the arrows that came along, the shield and the thieves tools. Uh, and I would like to, in exchange, purchase a set of plate armor, as well as ink another tattoo on my left arm this time. Uh, the tattoo would be for shield. Okay. Um, now, question, sorry, the, since I bought plate armor, how does that work with replacing armors immediately, or do I have to do the, like, prepare action for it? Uh... I mean, I'm doing prepare action anyway. Yeah, you, just... you would have to prepare, because it does take okay. time, especially with plates. So I wouldn't be able to sell the chainmail currently, right, since I'm still wearing it? I tell you what, uh... Once you take it off, because I don't want to rush you, you know. Those links can rip and tear a bit at the skin. Take your time, and as soon as you have doffed it, it will magically appear back in the gift shop. I appreciate that. Um, trying to think if I want to go for the Ring of Resistance or not. But I don't want to be greedy. I think I will leave it at that for now. You are certain? Yes. Very well, then this concludes your second intermission action, and you may now prepare as your third. Prepare action. First, I would like to drink. Mm. Yes. I will. Uh, no, you know what? Let's keep that thing up. I will use Lesser Restoration to remove the deafened off of me. Okay. That's one spell. Uh, and as I'm casting it, I will just uh, mutter um, Vexus, remove this foulness from me, protect me, as I will do your bidding. And cast the lesser restoration on myself. Okay, um, you, sorry, using yeah. a spell slot? Yes, second okay. level spell slot, sorry. Okay. Um, and then I would also like to use a, well, use the opportunity to take the armor off, put the new one on. So equip the plate armor on myself. And I would like to use one third level spell slot for remove curse to remove the charisma consequence off of my weapon. Okay. Give me back my two charisma points. And as I cast that, Praxis, hear me now again and expel this foulness. Uh, as I just feel more charismatic. And finally, I will use a first level spell slot for a shield of faith and cast it on myself. Okay. And that's concentration? That is, yes. Uh, and as I cast it, once again, protect me, Praxis. Protect your most honorable warrior. Any other actions that you wish to take during your prepare IA? That would be all. Excellent. Uh, sorry to interrupt your preparations. Have you completed them? You're ready to go? Yes. Very well. Then your intermission actions have come to a close. We will see you momentarily, Dante. Greetings, Death Trap. It is time for your second and then your third intermission actions. What would you like to do for your second? I would like to go to the Archivist. Okay. As you mentioned, the Archivist, the Fate's Hand Tavern fades out of your vision as you find yourself moving through this grand archway. As you get to the threshold, you see the large piles of bones on your left and the seemingly endless stacks of bookshelves containing all manner of tomes and books. You also simultaneously see 
a humanoid figure emerge from the shadows as you feel a consciousness enter your own. I need either a persuasion, investigation, or intimidation roll, please. All right, I am going to do a persuasion check. Not good. <laughs> final roll. Um, that's going to be my final roll. Okay. You hear the voice of a Brunga all in your head. Death trap. Although I would love to converse with you, it has been a rather trying few hours here for me. I am willing to give you one piece of information, however. Would you like to know the enemy that you will be facing? Other than your fellow contestants, of course. Or the room that you will be competing in. Um, I want to know about the enemy, please. As much as it pains me to speak of one so treacherous as him, you will be facing an eternal, undying member of my former race known as the Elithid. One who has achieved greatness, abusing all of my work. I must say goodbye to you, Death Trap, as I must now vent my rage. And you just feel his presence storm away from your mind as you find yourself back in front of Therangul. Okay. I hope that that was a nice visit for you with uh, Brungal. Yeah, perhaps he'll talk to me more next time. All right, then I would like to um, prepare. And how would you like to prepare, Death Trap? Okay, order is important. So he is going to use three of the four spell scrolls of remove curse um, for those consequences. Does it matter which order? No, not for that. Okay. Okay. Um, he's already got the Ion Stone activated. He is going to use a scroll of enhanced ability. Wait, sorry, though. You said three of your four consequences? There, He has four scrolls. He only got three consequences because oh, okay. he rolled a 20. Yep, got you. Sorry. Um, he's going to use a scroll of enhanced ability, Eagle's Splendor, to give him advantage on charisma checks. It is concentration, although he's going to cast something else that's going to take it down at the end of this. Um, Remy, I did email you the stuff he bought, but I will also put it in chat. It won't let me do it when I'm in the when I'm waiting. So, um, so once he once he gets Eagle Splendor up, he is going to use a fourth level spell scroll of Find Greater Steed. And he needs to make a charisma check at advantage on that advantage because of the uh, scroll, the spell he just uh, cast. Okay. And what's the DC on Find Greater Steed? Um, since it's fourth level, it's a 14. Okay. And um, can you just read out Find Greater Steed for everyone? Yes, yeah, sir. Find Greater Steed. Um, so it's fourth level conjuration. You summon a spirit that assumes the form of a loyal, majestic mount appearing in unoccupied space within range. It takes on the form you choose a griffin, a pegasus, a periton, a dire wolf, a, rhin a rhinoceros, or a saber toothed tiger. It has the statistics provided in the monster manual, um, though it is celestial, a fae, or a fiend, my choice instead of its nor norm normal creature type. Additionally, if it has an intelligence score of five or lower, it's six, it's got a 10 anyway. I'm going for the Pegasus. Um, and it gains the ability to understand one language of your choice. And then, of course, I could control it as a mountain combat, so. Okay, and Pegasus is large? Uh, that's a good question. I believe it is. I got the stat block right here. It is. 
yes, it is large. Let's make sure I can actually get it though. Um, and Pegasus is in the rules book as one that you can summon. Because okay. I think I don't think they all are. So that would be charisma because that's his spell casting ability. I am going to cast that at advantage or roll that at advantage. So definitely hit the 14. Yep. Cool. All right. So he's going to uh, store the potions of superior healing and speed and the scroll of destructive wave and remove curse on his belt right now. He's going to employ the oil of sharpness to the vorpal weapon. He's going to employ the oil of slipperiness to himself and his equipment. Um, sorry, the oil of sharpness is one hour duration. Um, slipperiness is eight hour duration, so they'll last for the entire time. He will summon the golden lions. Um, so he's going to have the, he's going to have the mount plus the two lions. He is going to feed a potion of fire breath to the steed and one to each lion. So using all three of his potions of fire breath, he is then going to activate his channel divinity peerless athlete. Um, and I'm sure you probably want me to read that out. Yep, please do. Uh, da, 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 da. I got a million of these things open. Uh, come on. For the next 10 minutes, you have advantage on strength, athletics, and dexterity acrobatics check. You can carry, push, drag, and lift twice as much weight as normal, and the distance of your long and high jumps increases by 10 feet. Um, so, and this uh, distance causes normal movement, of course. And so that's just basically in case somebody wants to grapple him again. <laughs> uh, well, it also helps on his shove. So that's got a 10 minute duration. Then he's going to drink the potion of invulnerability, which has a one minute duration. So in round one in there, that's already one minute gone. I understand that okay. he will he will then mount the steed and he will use his scroll of spirit shroud. Um, spirit shroud. This is so this is concentration. So this will take down his enhance ability, but he doesn't need it. This is a third level spell that he already knows anyway. You call forth spirits of the dead, which flit about you for the spell's duration, which is one minute, by the way. The spirits are intangible and invulnerable. Until the spell ends, any attack you make deals 1d8 extra damage when you hit a creature within 10 feet of you. The damage is radiant, necrotic, or cold. He is choosing radiant. Um, sorry, the steed is also going to be um, fiend as it was last time. You, I have to specify that in case there's any damage because um, it could be face Celestial or Fiend. So the Steed is Fiend. He's choosing Radiant Damage for um, Spirit Shroud. Um, any creature that takes this damage can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn. Um, so that basically prevents healing. In addition, any creature of your choice that you can see that starts its turn within 10 feet of you has its speed reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. So as long as spirit, uh, spirit Shroud is up, the trio is going to have their speed reduced by 10 feet if they start within 10 feet of me. And then I have two auras that are, because I'm a paladin, um, one of them is the um, protection aura, which will apply to Dante and Barristan. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the... Um, Alacrity Aura, which if they start their turn within five feet of me, they get an extra 10 feet of movement during the turn. So okay. again, this will this will apply to my team, which is what I consider my team only, um, even from the start. I'm, the other ones are not going. Um, and because he cast a Spirit Shroud while he was mounted, it also affects his steed. I don't plan on not being on it but <laughs> i know how that worked last time so okay so f for clarity though it's fine during your prepare action that you mounted and cast it to get the benefits but going through the portal you can't be mounted correct and he, but it, like i said he would still have that on him um just in case for some reason we get separated and he has to attack on his own so okay yeah, um, you're gonna definitely the, have to remind me of yeah. these things and i yeah getting a mental image of both Remy and Todd 
frantically writing at the moment. So. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And, and again, we'll go slow if we need to. Um, I'm sorry. That yeah, that's it. Um, the I just want to go back to the spirit shroud just to clarify. When you any attack that you make deals one d eight extra damage. Mm-hmm. Since the horse is going to the steed is going to have that, would that apply to its fire breath? Just say it's it again. It says an anytime you attack. Oh. Correct. Yeah, Read so the, the fire breath you're right. is a save, it's not, not an attack. An attack. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I, that's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify, but you're right. Okay, and that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, anything else for you, Death Trap? Nope. Get me in there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Good luck to you. We'll see you uh, momentarily. Greetings, Tridex. It is time for your second and third intermission actions. I have been informed that you will be preparing with Shay and Ellison for your final one. Yes, correct. So what would you like to do for your second? I would like to parlay with Death Trap. Ho, ho. Just one moment, please. I wonder if he's going to take this invitation. What do you think? I think we both have the same number of fate spheres. Mm. So I don't see any reason why he wouldn't. Would you like to place a wager? Mm -hmm. Are you offering? I am. Ten gold says he will accept. Done. Oh, 10 gold, you say, that he will accept? Yes. I actually only have five on me. You could owe me. Well, as I become your general, I'm sure I will perform a lot of services for you. You think uh, I'll get my money back, you're saying? Of course. Very well. Let us see here. Greetings, Death Trap. You have been summoned to a parlay circle by Tridex. Do you accept or refuse the invitation? You've got to be kidding. I, I accept. Very well. In that case, you have three minutes, Tridex, and it begins now. I accept your apology for now. Ah, Death Trap, I want to tell you a story. Let, let me know if you've heard this one before. Once upon a time, there was a warrior who went by the name of Matthias Crow. This warrior, known for his unyielding will and unshakable sense of justice. Now, Matthias found himself, much like you, over his head, and he perished. And at this point, Tridex just starts to walk around you slowly in a circle. Now, Matthias had powerful friends, and one of those friends brought him back. And do you know what happens next in this story? He dies again. And do you know what the moral of this story is, Death Trap? It doesn't matter how many times you come back. Those that are fated to fall will continue to fall over and over again. And that's why I'm not afraid of you. Are there any working parts in that head of yours? What, what god do you worship? Praxis. All oh, right. I assume that's what the symbol meant on your shield. See, where I grew up, we worshipped Palion, not me. But those around me did. And if you worship Palion, we might have had a problem. You see, Palion is responsible for my sister's death. And ultimately, the reason I'm here today. But Praxis, they're nothing to me. Kind kind of like you. Do you think you could survive without Mama Shea protecting you every step of the way? Oh, we'll see. We'll see what happens today. Do you like power? 
Death Trap. Do you like chaos? No, and, I don't. Ah, you see, I do. I worship Luxoria. Now she's a god worthy of my time. She will help me rise to the position that I rightfully do deserve. Your god? I've had prostitutes that scared me more than you do. I'll go <laughs> one-on-one with you any day. Before we part, I have a gift for you. And then at this point, Tredex walks up to you and he takes a single dart off his bandolier um, and very slowly tucks it into your belt. I intend to kill the monster today and I want us both to survive until the very end. That dart is to allow us to avoid soul decay. You can throw it at me and I'll do the same, you know, in the interest of survival, of course. So you're going to stay? You're not going to run away after we kill the, the beast? Oh, I plan on killing the beast. It's very it's the smart thing to do. And at the beginning, you accepted my apology. I think I want to apologize for something, but not that. I want to apologize for not finishing you off for the first time. I'll make sure to do a better job. I'm sure about that. Gentlemen, as much as I would love to watch this continue, as you are just generating so much hype. Whew, I'm afraid your time is up, though. But I like this energy that we've created here. Oh, I can't wait to get into the battle. Oh, I might need to take a break before that happens. Thank you very much to both of you. Good luck. Whew, that was intense, Tridex. I kind of feel like you may have been trying to goad him into attacking you. We'll see, we'll see. I do feel like we need to kill the monster to have a chance to survive the next round. But my god and me love chaos, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens either way. Well, this brings us to your third and final intermission action, which is to prepare. And is there anything that you wish to prepare before we invite your uh, soul-bound partners in? Nope. Invite them. All right, here we go. <laughs> Greetings to the three of you. You have all chosen to do the prepare intermission action together. Out of character, we have nine minutes before we start live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who wants to start? Uh, so, as it's, I've sent the preparations, the entire list over to the roughs already. Um, I have timed it out so I can just kind of go over how long it takes us to cast everything and then what we're casting and then we can do the roleplay part of that. That's okay with you? Yep. Do it. So the first segment of this, uh, we will be spending three total hours of each of our parlay, each of our prepare action, casting ceremony and lesser restoration, as well as two remove curses from myself or on myself. Okay. Um, so let's, let's write up some notes. Uh, so as Allison comes into the preparations room, he grabs onto Shay and Tridex's hands, interlocks their pinkies, and then puts his hand over both the sprinkling silver dust. Tridex, Shay, I have a gift, pure and true, from a man unknown, and boy you knew. With ties that bind and those that strangles, fate wove this bond of three. Day I stand with heart aflame. To shield you both, I set you free. Lamasaur's grace and trickster's waste, in solemn vow, I grant you this. From days forgot to dawn yet born, my faith in fire hides till morn. Every dawn a new beginning, compass true, no more spinning. We forged a pact in shadow's lie, my failed pyre, your path of May death come late where Kyrus lies, 
for time is past under their eyes. May power come to Laxoria's night, for glory lust false father's pride. Gift of honor neath eyes of truth, this boy will grow to betray his youth. Your fate above and chaos below, a promised gift, the great bestowed. And that is the casting of the wedding ceremony and two dedications, one for um, Tridex and one for Shay. So does this mean you are all married then? Unromantically <laughs> married into Tridex. She's my battle bride. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, um, Ellison holds up his hand and a point indicates the pinkies that they're all, that all their pinkies. They're uh, rings that they got in last round. Now each feature a stone in them as the three have used one of their casts of remove curse to dissolve our soul bond and regained our fate spheres. Okay, and you're all good with that? Yep. <clears throat> Uh, before long. jumping in, I just wanted to clear up. Did all three of you get married? And then did all three of you get dedication? I am not married. I am not dedicated. They are married. So okay, they, the they are bonus, married. And then they, they are get dedicated. dedication. Yeah. Thank you me. can't cast dedication on yourself. I don't think. Got it. So. Got it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it's not very romantic, but uh, some marriages I know are of convenience. Shay, would you like to say anything? A Tridex. I believe I would like to hear this boy's voice for real before we head into this battle. Let sound return like morning light where silence lingers in the night. With antlers strong and hope held near, may every note be sharp and clear. And she will cast Lesser Restoration twice and she will pull out a crown of antlers and place one on Tridex's head as well as her own. Okay, and the lesser restoration got rid of? Both of our deafness. Okay. Um, this next segment of casting will require an hour and 10 minutes per player. We're bringing each of our total time in the prep to four hours and 10 minutes. Um, Shay, do you want to start? Sure. Just just a heads up before you start. Um, mm -hmm. There's four minutes, so once it hits two o'clock, I'm just going to click start streaming just so you guys are aware. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask some questions before we're, we're doing that. Okay. I got the two lessers that Shay cast um, and the mo one marriage and the two... Dedication. Remy has my full list um, with him. Um, I can forward that over to you on Discord if you want. Okay. Yeah, they have it like play by played out. Mm -hmm. I'll just ask Remy. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> um, after uh, having cast Lesser Restoration, Shay will use it uh, to uses of her harness divine power to regain those spell slots back. Okay. Okay. After that, uh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> so in the gift shop, she had received a find familiar tattoo. It looks like a very millennial-esque feather with birds flying off of it on her forearm. And she will say, From skies above, on wings grace, bring forth a friend to fill this space. With feathers soft and eyes so bright, descend as dawn and chase the night. And she is expecting a raven, as that is the bird that would always be seen in her hometown, hint, hint. Uh, but it is a snowy owl and it she will put out her arm and it will land there. And it reminds Shay of her late husband. Um, 
Allison, do you still have that bead of fireball? Um, I do. And I will hand over a bead of fireball to Shay. And Shay will give that bead of fireball to the owl in its talons. Careful with that little one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, Ellison will then simultane- uh, similarly uh, touch a tattoo he purchased recently on his wrist. The gift of a life lived twice over. New friends we have made and old friends we have not forgotten. Please return to us. And you will see as that tattoo dissolves and becomes bright, um, expanding out. And it also manifests as a fine familiar. Um, I would like to reflavor an owl as butterflies because Ellison, but like uh, up to you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, well, so a like mist of butterflies kind of surrounds Ellison and um, kind of like land oh, just around him and flittering nearby. Um, cool. Uh, Tridex actually reaches into the bag and takes out a scroll of remove curse. Uh, and he asks Shay to cast it on one of his um, consequences, which is frail. And she does. The shadows lift, the chains unwind, in freedom's breath may new strength you find. The curse is gone, but the gift is clear. In liberation, fate draws near. While this is happening, Allison grabs his marvelous pigments and begins to paint on each of their um, armors. Um, Mm -hmm. As he does so, a... um, he paints the same symbol on all three of their of their pieces. One on his own uh, armor, one onto Shay's, I believe, shield. I could be mistaken. Back um, of the jacket. The back of Shay's jacket, and then uh, somewhere on Tridex. And the Mama's Boy's logo is painted on their respective material. Um, he then looks around and says, "I think it's best that we take a rest." Time comes and catches each of its children in a kaleidoscopic net. Driving even the greatest of men to Taya rests now under the eyes of my guides, where they will wake us, our rest return the weakness, rekindle the flame. And you'll see as these butterflies kind of begin to fly out around them, and uh, Ellison casts Catnap, uh, giving us each the benefit of a short rest, um, with the instruction to my familiars to wake us, wake us in 10 minutes when the spell has finished its function. Okay. Okay. Uh, when they come up from their rest, Allison is actually taller um, than when he had gone to sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, Allison is a little taller, a little older, um, not as small, well, childlike anymore. Um, but as he stands up, he looks around and he turns to Shay. Um, this next section will take Shay. One hour, one minute, and 30 seconds, bringing her total to five hours and 12 minutes. Ellison will take about 30 seconds here. No mm-hmm. big change, and Tridex will also take about 30 seconds here. So I will, with Shay. Okay. Listen. She will take a sprinkle of silvered powder and begin to sprinkle it on him. In youth's embrace, where dreams unfold, a bear of strength, both fierce and bold, with weapon in hand and courage clear, a doll of comfort ever near. Through trials faced and wisdom gained, the path to manhood is attained. With heart and skill and memories all, grow, rise, and heed the call. And at this moment, Shay is going to give her doll to Ellison. And this is the coming of age ceremony, right? Okay, so Tridex also wants to say something to Allison. Allison, whichever one of you is listening right now, being stuck in stasis with you has been a journey. In this time, I've seen you face your challenges, confront your demons, both real and imagined. But most of all, you've grown up. When coming of age in my clan, all warriors are presented with a weapon, one taken from a downed enemy. And at this point, Tridex actually pulls out the short sword that he got from Curtius uh, Vice's body. May this sword be a good luck charm and help bring us swift death to our enemies. And he presents you the sword. For clarity, 
Is this the gift shop sword or a regular sword? <laughs> no, this is just a regular sword, short sword that I got from. I will take the regular short sword and put it on my person. Now, you two, we are going against the Ither Lich, the professor. I have spoken to the archivist and they have quite a history with each other. The Itholich may have some notes that of import for the archivist, and I believe we should look into retrieving those, if at all possible. Knowing this information, that death ray, I do not look forward to it, so I would like to cast Death Ward on the three of us. Okay. In Shadows Deep, oh, yes. Just before you read yes. it, so what level is death ward level three no fourth 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 okay and so you're using three spell slots to cast it three times <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay in shadows deep where whispers tread a light to guard from thoughts of dread with courage fierce and hope in sight we may be shielded from the night and speaking of light ellison i've been picking up on your little tricks i believe maybe i can bait the other team maybe uh she's going to just cast light on her shield Beneath the glow and shadows creep, a hollow shield, its promise deep. Beware the flash, the glitter's might, for mischief can blind the clearest sight. And the light is going to glow with a necrotic looking energy, not unlike the dark saber from Star Wars. Cool. Tridex is getting impatient and he's <laughs> sharpening all of his weapons. Um, another tattoo uh, of a mirror image, thanks to Ellison. In Twilight's Veil, where echoes meet, a doppelganger's step we greet, a mirror's dance of faith and guise, a shadow's mask in shifting eyes. And at that moment, multiple uh, shades appear around her. Okay, and we are also going into the room of the wraiths. Quite the undeadly room. I believe we might need a little bit of backup. And at this moment, she was going to drink a potion of heroism and begin casting a spell. By moonlight's glow, and shadows weave. I call upon the past to leave. Arise, O spirit, from your rest. And she is going to look up at Matthias Crow's body hanging in the Fatan Tavern. A lieutenant once, now manifest. And she is going to cast Animate Dead on Matthias Crow. Oh, but my favorite decoration, are you really going to take him from me? I am going to give you the best general between one of these two men. I have no false illusions of grandeur. I will not be your general. I am not a general. One of these two men will, and I would like to create an army to fight with them. Very well. He motions with his hand as the chains holding Matthias Crow up in the air slowly give way as the body slumps down to the ground. A crime against nature indeed, Lieutenant. Uh, so that will be a zombie, yes. Okay. And 
under your control? Under my control, And yes. not concentration, just... Okay. Correct. Mm-hmm. Ellison? Um, you'll watch as Ellison begins to don his armor and shield, finally. Um, he is going to cast a couple spells. I'm just going to go through the list, and then I will do the full RP section altogether. Um, I'll be casting Freedom of Movement on Shay. I will be casting Blade Ward. I'll be casting Sanctuary, using the feature Universal Speech, writing Ellison, Shay, Rydex, and Theramgul. I'll be using the feature Emboldening Bond, targeting Ellison, Shay, Tridex, and Theramgul. I'll be using a second level spell scroll, and then I will be ending with taking a potion of heroism and using the help action on Tridex. Oath of peace, my weapons are yours while you provide guard, protect each other against our foe, and carry confidently this ward. Oath of a fleeting grace, May the embrace of an irreverent son follow where you lead. Tridex, thank you for this gift. With this pact, I skin from the false father's rage, a ward begetting his promise to protect the small of man. Oath of service, a shield to the, uh, a shield of that whose claim is of the mortal soul, a guide against promise and the abandonment of betrayal. Oath of patience, the gift of understanding as it passes from tongue to ear. May the spirit of intention reach the core of man. Oath of survival, the comfort of an ally waiting in the wing. May our bond keep us moving a light at the end of this tunnel. He will then use the spell scroll and have no oath prepared for it, but open it up and you will watch as this spell scroll um, kind of like tears and then he is like uh, shifting back and forth um, as he casts a spell from it. Um, chugs this potion, gives Tridex the help action. Tridex, I'd like, despite the day, I'd like to help you survive, if you'll allow me. Tridex, you're up. All right. Tridex, without any ceremony whatsoever, casts Giant Might, Form of Dread, um, Armor of Agathus, um, and then he's going to chug two potions. A potion of psychic resistance and a potion of heroism. Okay. And so I'll do a roll on the missability table. Just hang on. Yeah, let me bring up the log. Go ahead. Okay. And I believe because of my help action, I get this twice. Um, uh, with it, is it with just advantage? Read and then out the help action. I don't know. Depends on what was being helping. Yeah. Doesn't I see. announced that I would be helping him cast. Oh, I see. Okay, that's going to be next. So this is not with advantage. 88. 88. That's still in the comfort zone of no alternate effects, I believe. Or is it? Let me... No, I think it is. Is it? Okay. Potion stability. 88 is both potions work normally. Perfect. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is cast mirror image on myself, which is here where I have the help action. And I'm not sure whether or not guidance was cast on me from you, Shay, but um, let's try with the help action first. Am I able to? Is this one of those things that I can? I mean, it's a cantrip you guys are preparing together. I don't see why not. Okay. And what do I need to roll for spells? So just as a note for Mike, um, he currently has a 2d4 um, from Emboldening Bond. I'm sorry, from not Emboldening Bond, from Guidance, and then from the, I believe, the one of the other spells. I'm trying to remember what I cast on him. An advantage. Dedication. Um, dedication. There we go. Okay, um, so the two, 2d4, one of them is from Guidance? Or at higher level, Guidance is 2d4? One should be from Guidance. Okay. One should be from the Dedication. He should have advantage from the help action. And then I am also casting this with him. So I'm casting your image same he, at the same time. And I think I can do emboldening bond, but I'll leave that up to you guys. And you That's drink it. the, That's the other one. And you drink potion of heroism. Yeah, and I have less. 
So it should be if it's a DC less saving doesn't throw. Help. Less doesn't help for the ability check. Oh, uh, it's yeah. a check. Okay. Yeah, the what? ability check. So you have three die four bonus if you want to use the emboldening and bond. Okay, let me bring up the. This should be emboldening bond and guidance. Um, for his plus two d four. Tridex doesn't have to cast with uh, scrolls very often. What do I need to roll here, everyone? So it's 12. it's uh, what is your spell casting ability? Though? Do you even have one? Yeah, I do. It's charisma and okay. it's plus one. All right, so roll a d twenty. Okay. Add your charisma, and what level is the spell? second so it's he's dc is a 12. okay okay so you're at seven currently seven and then i'll do emboldening bond Oof. eight and guidance guidance <laughs> tradex mm. fails this well, the you, check you, is made at advantage with the help yeah, action. It's an advantage. Oh, okay. Thank you. So another D20. There we go. Okay, so you're good. Um, so as Tridex casts Mirror Image, Ellison echoes and both have Mirror Image. You'll notice that Ellison's images feature the young boy and then his three imaginary friends behind him. Um, the last section of our prep is going to take, oh god, a, a spell slot. We're each casting a thing. Right. Each casting what, sorry? Like one more thing. Um, so Ellison begins casting, and I will use a second level spell slot to prepare the silence spell when I'm using the ready action. Okay, so you're readying silence as to a held action? The, as a held action, yeah. So What's that's your my reaction. trigger? Uh, entering the room and seeing the monster. And the target? I don't have to pick a target. It's a point. Right. So yeah. okay. as soon as he gets in, he says, you're not concentrating on anything right now. I'm not concentrating on anything at this point. Um, so I will be okay. concentrating on silence. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> and uh, the, the sanctuary, you you cast sanctuary on yourself, on yourself, yeah. right? Sanctuary is cast just, on just one time. Okay. Yep. Um, cool. And just to clarify, with an earlier uh, the ceremony that I did on Ellison, I did it as a ritual, not using a spell slot. Yeah. Okay. And I will give the dust of choking to the lieutenant to hold. To hold? Yes. Okay. It's a zombie. Yeah, okay. Here, hold this. <laughs> um, and she will cast her last spell. Uh, spirit guardians, in midnight's hush where legends lie, the spirits of past arise. Guardians bold with ancient might, watch o'er the brave through darkest night. And I will explain what they look like when we go in the room. Okay, sounds good. And Tridex at this point says, about friggin' time, and he rages. And I think that's it. Okay. Um, One thing I need to clarify only at the end. Uh, Tridex, did you form of dread and then armor of Agathus? Right, I actually do need to roll for the form of dread. Um, I think you get to choose which temporary hit points you want. So, so to see our what armor of Agathis says, while you have these hit points. So if you want, I the way I read it is, if you want Ar armor of Agathis damage, you have to take the armor of Agathis temp HP. Okay, uh, when looking it up online, you can okay. always choose for temp yeah. HP, which one's higher. So yes, I was just going to roll can. and then and then sure. I understand. Okay. Um, but I do need to roll a 1d10 plus one. So yeah, I'm going to do you. that right now. Thanks for that uh, reminder. But it does armor of Agathis list as temp HP. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to go over. 
if you go over with your former dread, you don't get the extra ones. Yeah. You got to keep the two pools separate. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to yeah. do Armor of Agathus because it's five hit points. Okay, perfect. Okay. Is that all? <laughs> it has been an honor fighting with you both. Whatever may come, may come. That is the will. That's it will. Let's go. All right. Before we bring everybody else back in, I just have to say I'm trusting all of you to keep track of all of your own stuff and mm-hmm. be double checking with the refs. There was a lot going on there. There's absolutely no way I can track. I haven't even tracked most of that. Um, a lot going on. So we're going to take things very slowly on the turns. Do your best to remember everything that you've got going on, please. And uh, we'll just try to methodically move through the layers of defenses <laughs> that you guys have put in place. Yeah. Put, put a large base on Mike because he, he used Giants ba- uh, Mike. So go ahead yeah. and do that. Yeah. And yeah. For we'll sure. just. Um, sorry, Todd. Just clarification. Emboldening Bond is we have to be 30 feet from each other. And wedding for the two AC, Shay and I need to be 30 feet apart in order to benefit from that. So just, we all know it, but keep us honest. So you have to be within 30 feet? To benefit from the extra two AC with the wedding. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Well, with that, I will bring everybody else back in. Oh. Just trying to keep mm-hmm. everything straight here, folks. That was uh, a crazy round of IAs, some crazy RP. I can't wait for the YouTube video to come out. Are we going to do a quick bio break? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah.